Hello, baby. Someone call the doctor because I got a case of the gigglies. <laughs> was that just a non sequitur? To that was open a done after. Was a done. After yeah. a month away, <laughs> this is right. how you greet the people. I'm jumping in. I mean, hey, well, I, maybe that's why we were gone for the month because your case of the gig- gigglies got so bad that we case can... of the gudleys. Is that what you're Gud- gonna... well? I have the gudleys. You have the gigglies. Gotcha. What what do, what do the gudleys sound like? Uh, guddle. <laughs> I just go guddle a lot. I, I'm like I, a Pokemon I, now. I don't know if at this point uh, of airing, I will have finished Seinfeld. Um, but because, okay, uh, for context, I started it, it's on Hulu and it's leaving on my Wednesday in the past. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish this show. Um, so this is a message for, for the future. Exactly. Tenet style. Ten- tenet style. Gonna, by, by saying it, I will have done it. Um, <laughs> no, he, I just, you, you, that... you write, you like call a number and just say, Hey, I'm not sure if I'm going to finish Seinfeld. And then someone is like, he shows up and, uh, he talks to Hulu and says, Hey, we gotta, we gotta keep it on here longer. Exactly. You don't even know what happened. That man, that man, Seder. Yeah. That was him. Uh, No, I noticed he says, uh, uh, Kramer says giddy up a lot. And I think that that's kind of funny. Yeah, he does say giddy up. Yeah. I also saw the episode where he goes like, oh, yeah, like, oh, why did I say my wife? It has a good ring to it. I'm like, oh, hey, they said my wife. What's your favorite vintage piece that you've seen Kramer wear? Because it's like, I mean, obviously, you know, he has the reputation for wearing a lot of vintage stuff, but... I mean, I like Seinfeld. It's on TV all the time. Whenever I tune in, I'm like, damn, that's like a good sport coat or whatever. He's always got killer pieces. Actually, you know, well, the funny, the cool thing about this, and we're, maybe we're going to have an episode on Seinfeld in the future or something, <laughs> because I've, you know, this is the first time I'm, I'm watching it. Um, but I notice he wears a lot of the same stuff. Like, he wears the same Hollywood jacket a lot. He has the mm-hmm. same, like, 70s, like, Sherling jacket that he wears. Um, but there is, like, a white with, like, abstract blue floral um aloha shirt that he has on a couple times and i think that's pretty cool yeah he has some good shirts that's good i mean i do like george's style a lot in general it's very trad um and i keep trying to find images of it because every time i finish an episode if there's a good episode if there's a good outfit i'll try and post it on my story um but there's one end of season five where he wears like a db like a db blazer with like a red foulard tie and like a bengal striped shirt and then like khakis because he just got the job at yankee stadium and i'm like that's yeah. really good but then i can't find that shit anywhere like i i'm like oh, i have to go back and i'm like hulu ads come on dude not gonna not gonna go back to that do it. Take yeah, photo not, George Bush. Not, yeah not gonna do it uh but hey guys welcome back i know it's been a month hopefully you haven't missed us too much because you got that really hilarious bonus episode where we talked it was about hilarious yeah we, where we talked about um insert topic here <laughs> whatever we, we talked about <laughs> yeah um and uh i know some people are probably lost because they probably heard me say baby in the opening uh title song but hey you have to listen to the to the uh to the merch episode for that that's one that's right yeah <laughs> we're keeping it i as a little behind the scenes i listened to the corporate episode just to check mj's work and i said hey you forgot it and he goes oh we're, we're going for it i'm like yeah <laughs> we're gonna commit to this bit forever alienating all future people who listen okay, to the podcast perfect. it's i mean it's season two right so <laughs> yeah season two <laughs> season two new intro it's like it's like uh how in season one of a tv show the intro is all just clips from the pilot well guess what now we have a full season to pull clips from so the intro it's it's getting a little bit more dynamic it's changing a little bit yeah exactly i mean it's uh we have a new musical guest <laughs> slipknot slipknot <laughs> musical guest <laughs> slipknot <laughs> um yeah so uh, get ready for crazy new segments <laughs> get ready for kramer new segments <laughs> yeah we're gonna hey, talk Jerry. about kramer a lot more whoa get uh, it up. <laughs> he's never done anything wrong yeah he's uh it's not uh you know we cancel culture we gotta we're gonna cancel cancel culture and, and wake, wake the woke, the woke. That's, come on that's yeah welcome to, welcome to style direction a, a caitlin podcast. jenner podcast yeah, okay. <laughs> caitlin jenner for governor podcast without all the stuffiness that's right that's right uh no we talk about menswear here if you this is the first listen uh, you know to this podcast um and uh there's no stuffiness there's no there's no cancel culture <laughs> it's, it's it's there's we're not trying to be woke 
and there's no stuffiness. Yeah, That's what we I'm do. actually asleep right now. <laughs> yeah, keep the sheep asleep and wake the woke. <laughs> Hell yeah, baby! You should write that. You should write that to her and just say, "Hey, here's a campaign slogan." Yeah, Use add, add this as a, as a, the third comma, you know, to your whole slogan. That's what that's what yeah. this is. Um, but as we teased before, today we are talking about Esqu- the Esquire Man, uh, mm-hmm. which is a fun. Not a just fun the Esquire Man; it's a, a a bigger topic than that. That's right. We're talking about apparel arts and vintage illustrations in general, and there's yeah. a lot. I don't know how much we're going to cover today, but that's why you come back and listen to like the commentary track on the Sunday following and the episode. I feel like this is going to tie into an episode, I can't remember what it's scheduled for, but we're doing about just vintage details that we like. Like yeah, stuff exactly. that like you know we took from our days as vintage collectors and still uh, uh, try yeah. to stick with. <laughs> Think of it as an expanded version of our POV that just basically just on vintage. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, yeah. well, yeah, because this is something that both of us. So, I mean, I, I do want to give a little bit of a, a historical context. Yes. Top. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah let, let me let me explain. So the reason why we're doing this again is also not that we have, you know, you see these stuff put put everywhere. Right. These mm-hmm. illustrations by if you, like, you pr- I, I gar- yeah. like, I think most of our audience probably knows what these are the, yeah, the gentleman's so, gazette owns people, a bunch of these images for yeah some reason. scanned them and puts their fucking watermark on them we've probably seen like uh people post them as inspiration all the time everywhere you know uh some of the ads are also done uh, well uh, our friend our friend fab uh fantastic artist he mm-hmm. also does it in the style kind of like kind of decoy you know uh, travel log type of stuff from the 30s. You know, there's, there's, it's very all encompassing. These Esquire mags, these illustra- these apparel arts illustrations, and uh, the reason why I'm bringing it up again is because someone on the Fedora Lounge had scanned a bunch of them. Not everyone. He did yeah. admit that he did pick his favorites, so it's not everything. Uh, I've never held an apparel arts in my hands. I've seen tailoring catalogs, uh, which are more like you know for more explanatory but let me let me read to you what this guy wrote in his uh, initial post so what follows is his collection of esquire magazines and sartorial illustrations from what is termed their golden age esquire was the magazine was an outgrowth of the earlier publication apparel arts which was begun in 1931 of december as a christmas edition it was published by crazily the menswear <laughs> service corporation cool. among whose publishers were william hobart weintraub David A. Smart and Arnold. That's a good name. Yeah, David A. Smart. Um, I would hate to work with a guy named David Stupid. So, (laughs) luckily, these guys didn't, right? Yeah. Uh, And so, Apparel Arts was a trade publication. Okay, it was intended for the menswear industry, and and distribution was limited to wholesale buyers and retailers. And imagine back then, you know, you had, um, you know more menswear shops were independent ateliers they weren't mm-hmm. you know they weren't like ralph lauren where it's a self-contained store it was like department stores small haberdasheries which would source from different tailors had different brands you would carry like alden shoes floor shine shoes yeah. etc heart shafter marks you know whatever um so apparel arts was published peri- periodically during the year with very special editions sometimes bringing the total to eight uh, it was a lavish publication for a magazine and was bound between car- cardboard covers. It was it had commissioned sartorial illustrations intended to illustrate trends. Also, to, uh, you know, to me, also dictated trends because it, yeah. it contained industry advertising, which uh, which was sometimes had lush articles on how to dress, how to merchandise your items, and even had cloth uh, samples of the clothing that you would find inside. Um, basically, it's kind of like a point-of-sale trade simulator by retail salesmen. Think of it mm-hmm. as like, you know, I don't know, like like when you when you have an Alden uh, retailer, like the bloke had a catalog of the different Alden models you could do, you could do for special orders. Think of it that yeah. way with a little bit of editorial stuff um, included. Um, and so... What happened, apparently, according to this guy, and, and we've heard this from other people, like other vintage collectors, is that people started just stealing copies of Apparel I mean, Arts. I the, the illustrations, again, are, like, really good. Yeah. yeah. So, like, people would just start stealing them from these retailers, and eventually they were like, okay, well, we gotta, the public is is hungry for this. We yeah. gotta feed them. Exactly. Uh, and so that's that's when Esquire was born. And we all, that's right. we all remember that beautiful day. That's right. They also did, um, they first issue... Um, they uh, they came out in 1933 uh, mm-hmm. with Arnold Gingrich as managing editor, and then uh, 1934 became a monthly publication. So both Esquire and Apparel Arts started to become more regular at this time. Yeah. Um, and so 
uh, Esquire itself uh, as well. Uh, it fe- in addition to featuring many of the sartorial il- illustrations from a parallel arts, uh, Esquire became more of a magazine. It had fiction and nonfiction articles where people would submit stuff, top writers. You had those jokes. You had those funny, like, uh, you know, cartoons uh, that you would have. Um, that were Yeah, that were pretty common for Esquire in the day. Um, of course, you know, Ernest Hemingway, blah, 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 all these famous guys. But let's, 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 we're focusing on the illustrations. And so yeah. um, almost all of the illustrations that you see in Esquire came from apparel arts, almost all of them, but not every illustration from apparel arts made it into Esquire, which is why um, when the, when people started, you know, more modern uh, collectors started releasing their apparel arts stuff, I would see stuff that I had never seen because Esquire stuff, mm-hmm. you would see like, you know, Esquire themselves, if you bought a subscription to Condé Nast, I think in like 2010, you would get access to everything. You but, got the whole archive. Yeah, I should have done it, it. I wish I had. Yeah, but you didn't get the apparel art stuff. It's because they were two separate things. So when this stuff was released, I saw, like, this guy, this, uh, this you know, I don't know what his huge name is. I think it's Flannerian, Flanderman, whatever, uh, <laughs> Ned Flanders. <laughs> um, I, like, when it came, when I saw it, it was released, like, last uh, December 2020. I only started scanning it over the over this uh, spring. Um I, I saw stuff I'd never seen before, so it was really great. Um, and I mean, the the images, like, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images yeah. uh, uh, f- that this guy posted that we have saved in Imgur albums. Yeah, you might see, we're not going to release the whole Imgur album, but you will see some of our favorites in the show notes and the essay that yeah. I'm writing as a companion piece to this. Um, but uh, so here's some of the illustrators that were did the illustrations for Esquire. For, so you got lawrence fellows probably the most famous one um mm-hmm. you had robert goodman leslie salberg another good one charles fox lewis hurd frederick stewart heidgard charles frederick peters ruth sigrid grafstrom and others so et al um yep. a lot of them as, as so this right uh, the uh, commenter says here many of these uh, artists were fond of fellows work and and um oh many oh many of us are f- fond of fellows work and we all share their enthusiasm um and yeah, so what basically the seeing all the stuff was so crazy to me because it yeah. really made me feel because it was all new. It made me feel like back in, you know, when I was discovering menswear, a uh, vintage menswear. El- the illustrations were so iconic to me because it was probably the fir- only thing that I saw that had a lifestyle component to them. Yeah, it was no. I mean, it's like uh, it's it's kind of like proto Ralph Lauren. Um, it's 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 very interesting. And uh, so this is something that like you know we both discovered yeah. pretty early on, and also on the Fedora Lounge because I don't know if any of these images are still there, but years and years ago there was a whole section that was like just for you know inspo or magazine scans or something right um and where i saved a lot of these but again the the guy that was been posting them last year in december uh he includes the copy which most of the scans yes. that i've seen cut out mm-hmm. which is really interesting again like i i haven't read the copy before because most of the time they're cut yeah, out we've had a um, couple of uh, yeah of streams where we're trying to read some of the copy uh along with the uh, apparel arts. Yeah, we discovered that there's like, I'm not going to call it lore, but there's like reoccurring characters. That's right. Like if you look carefully at the illustrations, you'll be like, oh, these two like fat guys are always paired together whenever they want to talk about like portly men's fashion. Or it's like, oh, this father and son is always like together. These business partners. They have like a Joe Um, College character too, I think. Like, yeah, it's it's fun. It is a whole universe. In these, yeah, yeah, it's really <laughs> fun. And the thing is, so obviously, I mean, well, you know, uh, there's also like regular, ma- like like local magazine illustrations that you would get of like ads, which but were mainly for selling suits. And mm-hmm. we, I'll include some of those in the show notes also, just for reference there. But the thing is, with with all apparel arts, like it was a bit more cartoony in its illustration. There is a little bit of like ID. Uh, I- idealization about like you know this idea like especially like as a ralph lauren kind of a thing you know like these mm-hmm. these figures are like slender they're not that you know particularly detailed other than the clothes of course so it was really different than seeing like that and then like a photorealistic drawing of a guy wearing a suit or almost a photograph yeah. you know i that mean you would see yeah because it's like these aren't again like these aren't the most realistic drawings but they really I mean, that's like the look that that's what you're going for. This is what you want to look like. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's it's really crazy. So like when I like I I saved 
I save I still save a bunch of illustrations yeah. every time I see something that that's new. But there's something special about these apparel arts ones again because they didn't. It was like they put them into scenes, like like Spencer said, yeah. like, you know, like they're like it's them at a coffee shop, it's them on a plane, it's them. Yeah, it's like you know, yeah, it's like not just the clothes that are. Castle. Yeah, it's not the clothes that are cool. It's like yeah, they're always at like yeah, fancy restaurant in like Manhattan or like you know they. Like all the winter illustrations are people like uh, yeah. vacationing in the Alps and shit like that. It's just a uh, very envious lifestyle. I wish I was uh, a, a rich jet setter like this, you know? Of course. And, and the cool thing also is that, you know, these aren't like limited. Like you, they could draw whatever they wanted, uh-huh. you know? I and mean- the, I mean, the one thing that I think is really cool is that these weren't, like they weren't shilling any specific brands in these, yes. so it's like yeah, even less, even less limitations. They were, they were uh, everything. If you read the copy, they are never saying it's like oh yeah, buy this suit from Hart Schaffner and Marks or whatever. They are just saying like tell your tailor that you want these details or whatever. Yeah, it's 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 really weird because it's you know, and maybe that's why Spencer and I have kind of this similar kind of approach in in the in the podcast or even when I'm writing. It's like I don't really want to tell you what brand to go to, but I want you to be like, well, next time get this horizontal peak lapel, get your trousers this way, you yeah, know, or just like figure out what you want. Yeah, like figure out what you want and then buy from those. Brands. Yeah, I you know you know, and especially I mean, obviously we only learn that by reading the copy, but even when you look at the pictures, you can't you don't know what brand it is, right? Like. Mm-hmm. So all you have to do is just be like, okay, well, I want to recreate this. I got to get that shade of gray trouser. I can't, I, it's not telling me the brand. So I'm going to have to do some work ourselves, you know? Yeah. Like, and, and I think a lot of vintage guys kind of have that too. Some vintage guys do like finding certain brands that they like. You know, some guys do like, we have a friend who like, who bought, tries to buy like all thirties Hart Schaffner marks. Like he knows. Yeah, or what, like Mark Chevalier. He like yeah. only buys, like he, he has a collection where he's OVIOT. like only buying the, well, yeah, Oviots. But I think he said in the past where it's like, he, yeah, like besides Oviots, he just likes collecting the best of the best, like the highest yeah. end brands of the time. So you could, you could probably do it that way too. But I think a lot of vintage guys were like, I don't care. Like if it was made in like a, like a Hong Kong tailored suit or a whatever, as long as it looked like, you know, uh-huh. the things that you're seeing here. And so it's like, it's amazing to look at all of these illustrations. Um, and it makes you wonder too, when you're reading the copy, it's like, are they dictating? Are they, are they reporting trends or are they yeah. dictating trends? Cause it's like, because it's, I mean, we don't really see. So it's like, honestly, you don't really see like a lot of real pictures of people dressed like, the like Esquire man, like, uh, you know, movie stars did it and, and stuff like that. But it's very, you know, you don't, there's no like photographic version of these illustrations where you see a bunch of people like in the thirties hanging out in the Riviera dressed like this. Yeah. You know, yeah. You don't see like the guys in like the fucking Alps wearing like these crazy, like ski suits that look like basically like a a plus four suit, you know, or whatever, or these guys wearing like, you don't really see that, um, so it makes you wonder, like, how accurate of these, uh, of, uh, you know, these apparel arts illustrations are of the time. You know, it's kind of like, you know, if we liken it later, we're gonna talk about Esquire Man, but like when we talk about hashtag menswear, like, oh yeah, like that's like the defining look, yeah, of of menswear enthusiasts, but like mm-hmm. regular guys did not look like that, you know. But these these apparel arts, they're so notable not just for the detail in it and again there's so much like you know you see a lot of variants you see a lot of like you see like six on three db suits but they look like you know they're rolled to like a four like a a four on two or whatever you see like all the details of pocket squares the fabrics the i mean one thing of the hats you know one thing i want to point out uh, aside from the illustrations they also did these like collages like fabric collages yeah um those are also great just quick shout out to those I mean, I just like, it's the, so cool to see I, the I texture all, on everything yeah. to like really like get a look at the textiles because that's the one thing you can't really see as much with yeah. the flat illustrations, obviously. Exactly. I mean, there's like a bunch of different, like, so they have like the common one, right, is like a, a single image uh, illustration, usually like a scene, and then there's copy on the bottom. You have that. Mm-hmm. You have like wider scenes, like there's like one for like Memorial Day and there's guys in suits. There's also stuff for like, you know, like like airplane travel. There's a bunch of big spreads. You have like that stuff. You have like the ad type of stuff, which is like, you know, like like a Bally shoe ad or like interwoven. Yeah. You see a lot of interwoven socks, which is- Which are, like a- they are also in many cases illustrated by these like Esquire 
uh, apparel yeah, arts illustrators. Exactly. So mm-hmm. those can get kind of confusing. Uh, you're like, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah, you have you have here? that. You also have uh, what I love is like the guides, like the different like yeah. th- that show like oh, oh those are great. here's like here's Mister John Smith traveling to Europe, and here's like five outfits he could, he should pack, and he goes like uh-huh. you know like and it's just like it's like an Instagram like flat layout, you know. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Or it's like, or it's like those like things of like just uh, you know, um, like those head down like shots of just a guy standing there like a robot. And it's like that, but like different outfits. You know, it's fucking, mm. it's really cool. I I love whenever they have variety, like um, where they illustrate like the differences between like oh well here's like summer uh evening wear and then you could here's you, you could wear it uh the next day and take the jacket and put it with like a business suit you know like there's a mm-hmm. bunch of that kind of stuff in there so there's a lot of i mean again i'll try and include as, as many variances as possible in the show notes and in my essay but yeah there's a lot to gain from these apparel arts illustrations that you probably um have maybe seen parts before people have probably cut them out but they're really um they're real cool to see like how they thought men should dress based on yeah. occasion, based on location, because yeah, it goes everywhere. Alpine oh, skiing yeah. to like fucking on the beach to the pool to Las Vegas to wherever. Like they they thought of like everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but the biggest thing is they show you how the tailoring silhouette and details change from year oh, to year. Oh yeah, because, that's really cool. Because I mean, it's one thing to see on a person because like. I mean, no offense to human beings, but you can't always tell. But when you have to draw it, right, you are forced to show the lines um, of each thing and how they how they um, correspond to a drawn human. So you could see how the like the, the shoulders have changed, how the go- like the the gorge height would change, where mm-hmm. where how long the jacket is, how full the pants are. You because you're drawing it, you have like you, it's it's a conscious decision. So seeing that. Not only from like you know the 30s to the 40s, and the guy included who included this stuff only went up to the like 1949 because at the 50s, um, it uh, the the apparel arts kind of fell out of favor. The illustrations kind of fell out of favor. Uh, you wouldn't have as like it was more like editorial like written content at that mm-hmm. time. It, it became more of a well, magazine. Because, yeah. Well, didn't uh, apparel arts became JQ or JQ uh, GQ? <laughs> In in like the fifties, nineteen fifty seven. Yeah, exactly. So it kind of lost that by that time, um, and you can see how like later illustrations kind of move in that direction. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, you would see uh, what I'm particularly fascinated in is like when they would report on like Ivy style or like youth style. They would like yeah. taper the. They would say like, "Oh, look at Joe College here wearing tapered crop trousers," and then you would you would see it. Like they would actually draw like it looks slimmer. You have a little bit more contour to the leg, and there. then they'll have him next to like his dad for reference, and it's like exactly. and here's the you know conservative businessman. Exactly. Uh, I also like when the copy like just says it's like oh pleats are out this summer, and then you know it's like oh okay well <laughs> in the summer of 1935, I wouldn't want to wear pleats. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Or like when they're like oh yeah like these these like foulard ties are in. Oh, oh now it's regimental ties. You know it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> You know, they, they have all this stuff, strafadors. And again, these stuff also show you like how rare some of this stuff is. Like there's uh-huh. like, like Tyrolean shoes. Like, yeah, we know oh, that I mean, they I was going to like say like all the footwear, like there's so many, like so much crazy footwear. I'm looking at an illustration right now that has canvas and like rope. It's, it's not like a rope sole. It's like two tone <laughs> canvas and rope spectators. They got some like crazy like espadrilles with like all the laces, uh, some weird ass like chunky uh, single monk with like a crepe sole. Yeah, like, yeah. I've never seen that. any of this shit in person, but here yeah. it is. And you know, like uh, this stuff, like how crazy it is to me. It only furthered my expanded definition of classic menswear. Um, mm. We're gonna get, we're gonna have an episode on like the different terms and what we consider to be things <laughs> in in the future episode because I know that that's kind of a common question we get of like, oh, what counts as classic menswear? Like, how, you know, what do you guys think is heritage? Blah blah blah. And honestly, looking at this stuff for years and then seeing it expanded so often by people who find new stuff, um, especially also, uh, and I'm gonna include these too, but like, there's also like like European versions of apparel arts or like uh, mm-hmm. European scans of very similar artists who do stuff. 
you see so much crazy stuff. Like, it wasn't just man in the gray flannel suit. Like, there are, like, yeah, long sleeve spear point polos. There are, like, fucking, like, gaucho shirts. There's yeah, like, the or, shoes like, that you see. Yeah, rope closure shirts. Like, yeah, those were big in the summer. Pullover stuff, right? Terry cloth DB jackets that you would wear. That people is- on the Discord think we're crazy. I mean, I, I think a couple people on the Discord think we're crazy for wanting those. But how would you, why would you not want one? <laughs> Yeah, imagine that, like, yeah, Terry Cloth shirt, cabana shirt, whatever, to the pool. Dude, fucking wrap yourself in a sport coat made of Terry Cloth. You're gonna, like, why, why, why wouldn't you want that? <laughs> and you look cool. <laughs> yeah, and the guy in the illustration looks cool, man. You know? Like, this is, this is just a magazine about cool people just looking cool, doing things. It's wearing awesome. cool clothes. Yeah, yeah, and it's, and again, like, the thing is, I think Spencer and I have learned that Nothing really is new under the sun. Like this, uh-huh. it really yeah. Does like people talk it. about people talk about so much. Like uh, you know, we mentioned the the Ivy illustrations earlier. People talk about so many things. Like you know, uh, penny loafers and like button down collars. Like they weren't invented until like 1950. But yeah, you see all these people. Like you see people wearing like sockless suede loafers in like fucking 1932. Like yeah. we've been doing the same hashtag menswear shit forever. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. People have been wearing like bold stripe shirts, window pane jackets, you know, people have been wearing like, 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 there's a couple of pictures of like, of guys wearing like trousers with fucking white plimsolls, deck shoes and everything. It's like, oh, yeah, obviously, this is still a thing, you know, it's, Mm -hmm. it's still happening. And I, I understand, like, what, what people have to understand is, like, yeah, we, we're, we're seeing the 70s version of this, but, like, there is historical precedent. Maybe these guys in the 70s who are, who are reviving this stuff had, like, apparel arts magazines, and they were looking at it, and they were like, hey, let's just yeah. bring this back, you know? Oh, we should, we should briefly, I mean, this kind of fits into Esquire, I guess, but the Esquire Encyclopedia of Men's yes. Fashion. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is an incredible resource. Some, I mean, uh, I, I feel like a lot of our audience probably knows this, also, but in case you don't, it was this uh, book published by all the like original like writers and publishers of Esquire mm-hmm. in the seventies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was just—I mean, it's what it's what it says on the tin. It's the Encyclopedia of Men's Fashion by uh, decade. By decade, it is one of the most detailed things like about fashion I have ever seen. Yeah, basically, it's been out of print for like thirty or forty years, and yeah. it's like almost impossible to get now. But yeah. Ethan and I were very lucky to be able to go through a copy at his school library once. Yeah, it was very awesome. Um, they um, basically what it is is it it goes through decade by decade and it tells you what was popular in there. And the thing is, like, there's like a little bit of a grain of salt because it is like you know again in some cases forty years removed from the actual mm-hmm. decade it is. But it's still fun to see what they would consider to be like a twenty shirt. Like they talk about like how detachable collar shirts became attached and how soft they were, etc. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- I think that- there. I mean, hey, uh, hey, I think there might be some digital copies floating around. I don't know how legal they are, but if you can find one, hey, it might be, yeah, might be a good idea to uh, to save it. Yeah, because uh, for example, um, both the Esquire um, Encyclopedia of Style, well, in particular that one does cost like around like five to seven hundred dollars, I think, on eBay usually. Mm-hmm. And then apparel art stuff is like three to five hundred if you find it. And remember, apparel arts is like monthly by year. So there's a there should be a lot of them, but a lot of them are in the hands of collectors, maybe fashion archives somewhere. And if you do see yeah. it on eBay, like you'll it'll, it'll be like, Oh yeah, two hundred bucks for like nineteen like August nineteen thirty seven. Like it's like it's it's very small. And, I, and the thing is, I don't even know what else is in there besides these illustrations, right? Like, when this guy posted them, like, yeah, he posted, like, maybe, like, 20 from each decade. He said that there's not, like, he didn't do all of them. So I'm curious to see what mm-hmm. else there. But I've, I've literally never held an actual apparel arts in my hand. So it's really tough, you know, to know they, I mean, what yeah, else you're missing. They're, yeah, at flea markets, you find a lot of, like, old Esquires and GQs, but generally they're not that old. They're from yes. like the 50s, 50s and 60s. 60s. Yeah. All the older stuff, yeah, just gets snapped up very fast. Yeah, it's really tough. Which is why, again, these illustrations are so important to us. Mm-hmm. Um, they are incredibly rare. And again, they, they showed us how people dressed in a way that we just had never seen before. Um, and I mean, it's like so if you were if you were specifically going for a vintage look like we were. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just, like, an incredible resource. It's so much better than just, like, 
just in terms of like you know pure style it's better than looking at movie stills looking at old photographs just because you get so much more detail yeah Um, exactly and the thing is too is that these um especially the 30s ones like they're really how should i say this uh most of vintage menswear at least in america they actually don't really dress that 30s they mm -hmm. dress more like 40s war swing time and even 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 the hardcore collectors they will wear like a, a crazy swing tie with like a 30s belt back it's just because that's what they like um compared compared to like the uk which is a bit more conservative uh which is to me a lot of more early you know or like you know 1934 whatever till 1939 yeah. escort which is what i like because i never really liked the swing ties so again for me it you know it was about seeing these illustrations where you see brown check jackets, striped shirts, and whatever, because it's more conservative. And also, like, I could make those connections to what I was seeing at the armory, what I was seeing from all the stuff. Like, there's a lot of commonality that you see there um, that I realized, oh, this actually isn't dated that much. The styling mm-hmm. is pretty much the same. Maybe the cut is different, but, like, overall, like, extended shoulders, striped shirts, you know long point collars um those are pretty pretty f- uh par for the course for early yeah. 30 stuff i think i think uh, what is maybe the most influential to me today and i think even if you're not into vintage it could still be uh for you is uh, we talked about you know how clean everything is like the clean lines the drape uh on on everyone in these illustrations is just perfect uh because they have to be all my i mean i want all my pants to fit like this it's like yeah it, it's not you know <laughs> it's not possible because i'm not an illustration but yeah, yeah with a fucking is just triangle width. body and yeah, long legs everything is the perfect width it has the perfect drape it's hitting just right above the shoe where i want it i mean like this is like yeah this is why i tailor my pants the way i do like since high school i have wanted this fit yeah i see like esquire magazine or apparel arts is still influencing men all over the world uh to get the perfect look it's influencing men in orange county and la county (laughs) that's right all Um, over the world but let's talk we're talking about influence let's talk about the esquire man that's right and so this is something i don't i i is uh, sorry i'm I'm like stuttering a little bit but (laughs) is was it written somewhere i don't really remember if i I feel like esquire man I don't, I don't know. I, I I feel like I've seen it before. I okay, think yeah. Esquire Man is like what, that may be a period term, but I don't know. Yeah, it might uh, be like what we like call it. it. It might be what other people have called it too, other like fashion or amateur fashion yeah. historians. Like, I mean, people like, d- it did have like a reputation, like uh, uh, Die Workwear has a thing about it and he includes a New Yorker cartoon where mm-hmm. a guy's wearing like, yeah, he's wearing like a plaid jacket with plaid pants and like a polka dot scarf. And they're like, yeah, he, we- he reads Esquire. So yeah, like, yeah, exactly. even if the term Esquire man wasn't a term, they, there was knew. a reputation about a man who, like the man who would read Esquire. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because we talk about like being like hashtag, like you don't you don't want to be too hashtag menswear. And I wonder if back then people were like, oh, this fucking Esquire guy. I don't want to be guy. too Esquire, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, this, this had a particular look, um, and also in terms of other, you know, other people too, like not every man in 1930s dressed as the Esquire man. Um, Absolutely not. <laughs> um, but it was because I remember talking about this with Berkeley Breeds where I was saying how like, oh, the button down collar is Ivy, but it also was mainstream or popular as mainstream in a little while in the thirties because of how prominent it was in Esquire. And he was like, well, you know. The, the Ivy thing is not Esquire Man, and I told him that that was true, obviously. But it, it was like sometimes the Esquire Man's trends do kind of go in line with like other subcultures of fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, but in general, there was a kind of cohesive look, and it ties into how we how I said earlier, where it's like it's reporting on trends, but also creating trends. So it's yep. like. The Esquire man kind of encompassed just a very fashion forward, sartorially inclined person, Lawrence Schlossman. Um, <laughs> but but mainly because I mean, as we said also in other previous pods, tailoring was kind of the mode of dress uh-huh. for for this era, and a lot mm-hmm. of a lot of sportswear basically meant not business or formal wear followed in that line. So you see a lot of like you know casual sport coats, casual trousers that are still that today would look very 
you yeah. know, formal. Um, but the Esquire Man look, uh, <laughs> extreme well, pattern. That. Yeah, extreme yeah, pattern. Like, mixing. Yeah, I, I think that's the biggest thing. It's called out in that uh, New Yorker cartoon. But you know, there are some there are some illustrations where it's like fucking everything is a different pattern. It's crazy. Um, even I wouldn't go that far. Uh, and much more interesting combinations than, you know, we do too. Like you get a lot of like horizontal stripe contrast collar shirts or, you know, plaid shirts, check shirts, like stuff with polka dots. I mean, the, yeah, these guys were fucking patterned out. I tell you. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's also one of those things where it's fun to see just how bold they were. Like mm -hmm. you, again, you make fun of hashtag menswear now and you're like, Oh yeah, the window pane with white pants. And dude, you see variations of that in, in, in parallel arts. The thing is maybe not white pants, but you see it with like gray trousers and then like fucking crazy plaid gun check yeah. jackets. It's so wild. Like they, they really push it a lot. It was like, if you weren't, in a suit, you you gotta get like an odd jacket. It's it actually, it's actually crazily hard to find like a plain gray or navy jacket. I swear, every separate look is like some kind of brown, yeah. blue, gray checked jacket. Yeah, because all the suit, all the like you know, you get all the solids with the suits. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then everything else is uh, crazy. Yeah, it's really even like, if it's not even if it's not like uh, patterned. They like go out of their way to like draw a heavy herringbone or something. Yeah, on, twill, like, sport whatever. Coats. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really wild. Like they really did love this this idea of like pattern mixing. You know, maybe it's like sartorial prowess, as I have often said in my thing. Like you know, signaling your quote advanced dresser. Maybe it just means that you know you have like confidence, right? Like they're just writing that kind of stuff. And yeah, like like Spencer said, like it, it wasn't just also about like the plaid jackets, but like yeah, they loved reverse stripe bangle awning yep. stripe shirts and then you got like a fucking foulard brocade tie not, not you also had like regimental stripes you had artillery stripe shirt uh, ties as they well they had it all man they yeah. had it all they had they had small club collars they had big club collars they had small point collars they had long spear points they had collar bars they had them un like no unpinned stuff yeah fucking crazy man like they I mean, really these people loved just it the, the Esquire Man, I think the the thing, the main thing about the Esquire Man, they just had so many clothes, yeah. like an impossible amount of clothes. Ethan, you know, we we talked about how uh, all these are not just like you know, like not just like fashion illustrations, but kind of location illustrations. And these people, yeah, these people have gear for every climate, every activity, whatever they're doing, they have like a special jacket and hat for it. Yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. It's, yeah. I love it. I love it's it. Though. Like you know, like I, you would see something like, oh yeah, don't forget to commission like a navy hopsack jacket, but with like satin facing, so you can wear it to a tropical like evening wear thing. And then he's wearing that jacket with white pants and then like opera shoes, and it's like that's fucking crazy dude like that's so cool like you know like white pants i mean i'm sure some hashtag mental guys done like the white pants with like a dinner jacket but like mm. seeing it there with like i mean there's still a little bit more conservativeness to it because of like how full it's cut you know and everything but it's just so cool you know like it was yeah like said, it's not just about extreme pattern mixing but like having clothing for every occasion and every mm. every variety for every climate you know, yeah. like, I mean, oh, yeah. I, I don't think I'm not like fully into this, but I do like the idea of having like the right tool for the job or like putting on like an outfit for what you're doing. Like I want, I mean, I like the idea of like what I'm doing is communicated through the way I dress. I mean, that's, that's kind of what we do already. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's I what mean, I'm we, saying. We're, yeah, we're a product of this whole thing. I mean, I'm sub <laughs> uh, subconsciously, right. I mean like, like knowing like, okay, you're going to go golfing. So here's a trouser, but you're wearing like a windbreaker thing to signal that you're, you know, you're casual. We do that, you know, or yeah. like the cool, I mean, the cool thing is that the Esquire man stuff doesn't just apply just to tailoring, but you see, like or, or evening wear but you see stuff like of them fishing of them skiing you or know, yeah all the, the like pool. all the resort looks um where i mean this so this is i guess like just a little fun historical fact but if you look at a lot of these like uh riviera or beach looks they are wearing like weird mesh tops or whatever yeah and, and apparently and that's well apparently that's because at a lot of beaches in the 20th century like male shirtlessness was still banned 
And so you had to have something. And so, yeah, they would get these, like, ridiculous mesh tops that, like, like fucking fishnet. Like, it's not a shirt. It's just, like, yeah, a bunch of threads that they put on. But still, yeah, hey, you have to have that for the beach, you know? You just yeah. have to have it. And the thing is also at the beach, too, like, oh, you can go to the beach but not get in the water, so you'd just wear your fucking suit. You'd like, wear a suit on a beach chair. Yeah, t- because you're just there to relax and maybe eat something at the pier, but you're not in the water, so you don't, like, you know, it's it's great. And the thing is, you do see some photographs of that, right? Like, you see some guys wearing suits or, like, at least sport coats and pants to, like, the sand just walking around, you know? Mm. But yeah, this this Esquire man seemed to be like some refined dude who had, who loved to travel, worked in the city at some big job. Maybe you're like a corporate dude, you're a lawyer or something. But you also vacation in the beach, in the country, in another country, yeah. you know, and everywhere. You know, there's a lot of illustrations of professors, and I'm wondering, like, could professors afford to do this? <laughs> like, I guess they're wearing like not anything as as extravagant, but they still have like crazy like pink, you know, Prince of Wales suits or whatever. Yeah, it's it's so weird, like, because, again, we don't have the prices, they don't write, this was all, like, a guide to style, like, they were saying, hey, look, look at this professor wearing a three-piece with, like, a club collar with, a ye- like, a yellow base and a white, sh- and a white like, a uh, contrast collar, and then, like, a bow tie, here's what you could look, Mr. Professor Guy, find it, <laughs> you know, commission <laughs> it, you know? And in terms of about the I, mean, I was so inspired, you know, not just in the approach, but in the literal way of approaching, like the their literal mode of dress that they did. Like I still think I I still have to wear triple pattern mixing. Like whenever like I wear gray, b- brown, navy pants, and then like a sport coat that's usually checked, brown plaid jacket, with a fucking blue striped or reverse striped shirt. And then some foulard tie, striped tie. Like I, that is literally what I wear all the time. I, it, it is so. You know, after we did the whole corporate episode, I realized now, like a lot of menswear guys get into cor- get into menswear through business wear, right? Mm-hmm. And business wear, as we said, it's kind of yuppie, whatever. It's still also Esquire does have stuff on business wear where it's a lot more restrained. But when they when you're not at work, when you're doing the Esquire man like out in the wild, you are pattern mixing, you are wearing something wild. And to me, as a guy again who wasn't very corporate, that's what I latched onto. Hence, why my again my entire sartorial thing is like, yeah triple pattern mixing and they just did it with such i mean i say they they're fucking illustrations but yeah. these but these 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 idealized these, these people dudes, trapped in the magazine yeah they did they by a wizard they seemingly did it with such like grace and elegance i mean it's testament to the, how they're illustrated but it yeah, just looks it's so 1930s easy. 1930s slouch exactly and so a lot of a lot of times they're not like slouching but they have the attitude yeah they put their hands in their pockets too even sometimes yeah. and it's like you know, like, that was what stuck with me. That is why, like, it was proved to me that at some point, somewhere, someone was able to have this relaxed elegance of slouch where it didn't really matter what they were wearing. Of course, there was some self-awareness where they realized, you know, the Esquire Man is still idealized. But it was just different. Different to the illustrations of of advertisements. And by that, I mean, like, literal, like, cat, like, here's these brown sport coat that you can order for ten dollars you know it was different than like some manic like some photorealistic photo of or or photorealistic drawing of a dude it was like it's like drake's content but uh, like old like 2017 drake's content out there and and even then just like how drake's 2017 content was so new to me um this stuff was like a contrast to even seeing how other vintage people dressed because like the vintage people when they would take a picture (laughs) <laughs> doesn't look that good even in yeah. person it i feel look- like people people always try to even if they don't necessarily dress like the esquire man vintage guys will like pose like this <laughs> yeah they will always this is how they try to look when they're at uh events yeah exactly I mean, hey, that's that's what i do too i guess so who, who might just who might talk <laughs> but the thing is the illustrations look cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so yeah it was just so like you know it's it's yeah the same feeling we get from like looking at the like looking at um menswear content that was so subversive back you know for for um you know through like the armory and bryson's and everything it's like just seeing how clothes should be worn um mm-hmm. but that does bring to the bring to the mind uh how often it was, it was actually worn and the answer is probably not that much 
Yeah, again, there's, like, not, you know, outside of a couple, like, movie stars of the era, there's not many men, like, there's not many, like, photos of men who, like, dressed like this a lot. Um, yeah. You will see the individual, like, pieces. Like, yeah, if you look at old photos from the 30s, you'll see dudes in, like, crazy plaid jackets or whatever, but it's not paired all together <laughs> in the same way that yeah. the... Uh, that they were shown in Esquire. It's not like, oh yeah, he's wearing crazy plaid, you know, jacket and then the plaid pants and the striped shirt and the polka dot tie or whatever. Yeah. We also it's have to usually like to... one or two of those pieces at a time. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's also like, you know, not everyone goes full Drakes, right? Like it's just mm-hmm. kind of it's a good example of that. Um these these guys these Esquire men stuff is again it's very idealized and movie stars that did it were probably taking probably not even full Esquire. I mean, the only people I could think of that's probably fully Esquire is probably Fred Astaire. Like he was very fashion yeah. quote, fashion forward. Um, you know, he would wear like, yeah, the rolling O C B D with like a double breasted jacket. Like that's not exactly Ivy. And even even in the illustrations, Ivy is like three rolled to cotton twill suits with like a horizontal knit stripe tie and a um, OCBD. Like mm-hmm. Fred Astaire clearly didn't do it. He did like the more adult, or, like the more dressed up version, uh, you know, conservative or not conservative, maybe like a working a man version of it, you know, professional where it would be like, yeah, DB, you know, rolled to the one with like a straw fedora and spectator yeah. shoes, you know. But not everyone dressed like Fred Astaire. Like even like guys like Cary Grant famously did not do the Esquire man. Like his was a lot more conservative, mm-hmm. and especially as Cary Grant got older, he got a lot more calm in how he dressed. You know, when you, yeah, you know, he got he got deep into the uh, the Ivy look in the fifties and sixties. Exactly. You know, and so it's just it's really cool to see this kind of thing. And the sad part is we don't really have a lot of photographic evidence of people wearing it this way because. You think of all like of the great photographs that that come out. You know, people scan. Those are just everyday dudes, and they're not doing Esquire Man. Like they're wearing like the one or the the two one of two suits that they own that they wear mm-hmm. all the time. They wear you know very plain shirts, um, and maybe like a fun tie. Like that's kind of it. You do see some people do it, mainly more in like casual wear, where you see like the like the stripe, like the the polo shirts, the popovers, and everything. But or like a lot of the golf outfits, stuff like that. You yeah, see. you know, but you don't see like the crazy tailoring combinations, you know, which is really unfortunate. Which only makes like the mythic quality of the Escort Man even <laughs> more like legendary, because it's mm-hmm. like, oh man, and and maybe now for me, it's like, oh well, now that I have the ability to do it, because back then, you know, if I was in the same boat, I probably would not have the money to buy any of this shit but like now when you can see like you know these crazy checks these great shirts you can do bespoke and custom clothing is maybe a little bit more accessible it's like oh now you can do that um but to be clear um not everyone in the 30s dressed like the esquire man yeah you know nope Uh, (laughs) it just didn't happen yeah um well because it's like i mean not only yeah i mean yeah not only did you have to be just insanely wealthy to commission all these clothes but you had to be the kind of person who was so deep into it that you would go through the effort of commissioning yeah. all these clothes yeah um and there's you know among menswear and enth- it's it's still the thing with menswear enthusiasts today is like most rich people don't aren't like great dressers uh it's the rich people who are also interested in clothes and have good taste yeah <laughs> and have good taste and so and, and that's rare <laughs> that's just it's, rare. it's very rare <laughs> you know um but yeah, it's it's really, you know, it's just fast. I, I keep looking back at this. There's so much we could do, you know, as a deep... I mean, we have done streams on this stuff to, like, you know, mm-hmm. try and, and we barely scratch the surface. Um, but, like, what what is probably the most... the most um, interesting thing that I've, like, kind of... that I've uh, gleaned from it is that nothing is really new under the sun, man. I, yeah. I, said, this, I said this earlier, but, like... You know, so much of the 70s, the 60s, whatever, like they have taken a lot from the Esquire magazines. I mean, Ralph Lauren, literally, right? Like it's just, it's just you, it's just, in the, I mean, yeah, the like, copy, like I, in, I, the, in the format and everything. And we keep, com- we can keep comparing it to like Ralph, but yeah, like look at these illustrations and it's like obviously like different than like, in, you know, a 90s polo catalog or whatever, but it's like all the same ideas. <laughs> It's, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's like just cool rich people wearing cool clothes 
uh, doing preppy rich people things. Right. And, and and the thing is, when you look at this stuff and you realize just how class, I mean, it depends how you talk about classic. We're going to get we're going to get into that in the future. But for me, it's like, oh, chunky crepe sold shoes. That's weird. I can't imagine wearing that. Then you see a fucking guy in the 30s wearing yeah. it. Yeah. And and I'm- it's just like for me, right? Like, oh, I, I wouldn't wear it the same way like a Gucci model or some throwing fits guy would do it. But seeing it worn with like a wide, you know, a proper classic, you know, look that that uh, that's from the 30s. It goes, oh, that's how I can do it. And so it's not like it literally is nothing new here. You know, fucking open collar shirts, you know, sockless mm. penny loafers. It is so weird to me that like so many vintage guys are just like such sticklers about the rules. When you look at this and it's like they didn't give a shit back then. Like there are vintage guys who are like it's like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, you can't wear an OCBD with a suit or you can't, you know, you can't wear brown shoes with a navy suit or something. It just wasn't done. And then you look at it, it's like, absolutely. What are they the fuck wanted? Are you they wanted about? you to do it. <laughs> they, yeah. They, these these guys, these like fashion, you know, literal gods to people who are dictating what people should wear. We're saying, uh, yeah, you should do this. You should wear these like fucking galoshes on your shoes. You should wear fucking triple pattern mixing. And in some cases, even too, like I was, this is not not a U.S. Esquire thing, but I was I was looking at these uh, French illustrations. They had the same colors of like you know like of like you know red brown whatever but the top was window pane and the bottom was striped and it was oh, like man. and it was like oh yeah like why why and like someone translates like why feel constrained to the same patterns as a suit wear them as separates but like the same color like the same color palette and i'm like that's fucking crazy dude. yeah <laughs> but it's like you know like this like guys back then were pushing the limits you know they're probably maybe these guys are the throwing fits of, of <laughs> 1930s you know get these guys a podcast <laughs> yeah come on lawrence fellows like <laughs> you know but it's like all this stuff it only gives me more ammo to like experiment with my style and to wear it you know and the cool thing is is that i already have all these pieces it's just about recontextualizing them and wearing them in like new combinations yeah you know there are pictures of guys wearing like chore blazers or lapel-less jackets to the beach no dude i was looking at the the 40s one and it's crazy there's a guy who's wearing like a chore suit but it like straight up looks like those like ralph lauren cotton unstructured jackets like it has the three button it's like slim lapels triple patch pocket it has like the swelled edges and i'm like damn like i have this jacket in my closet <laughs> <laughs> it's so good like you also see and guys... again he's wearing it with matching shorts like who does that yeah yeah it's like the safari suit or whatever that they're calling it or the bermuda suit i think is what they mm-hmm. call it you see guys wearing a fucking like crew neck sweater with shorts and a double-breasted blazer like that's like so 80s you see guys there's like a really great picture of a guy wearing like like the keyhole frames with a db and like there's like polo shirt like propped up and it's a 1947 illustration like it's it's awesome there's guys wearing like worsted suits with like suede like derbies like oh you can't Mm -hmm. wear a derby with a suit well this guy i mean yeah you can barely see the situation but the copy is saying that he's wearing (laughs) that you know it's 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 so great to, to find out that even like this this era of of guys that is supposed to be held up as like one of the most best dressed eras of men's fashion at least sartorially wise yeah the golden wise, age the golden age call it. Yeah. they had the the they were saying that you could wear this stuff you know they were breaking the rules they were yeah. fine with it yeah and the thing is you know maybe you could argue that people didn't feel the confidence to do it or people just didn't have the ability to do it but at least someone out there was telling them that they can you know mm-hmm. i think and they they were fine and, with and now that's that. us yeah now yeah we're we're <laughs> we're a parallel arts believe it or not hey, give, give us a podcast uh, yeah steal us yeah but it's like you know if if they were able to do this and you know and and they and they they clearly had the thunder behind them it's like why can't you guys do it you know and it's obviously the taste Esquire, man yeah well, there obviously there is taste and and good execution behind it you know like there's uh-huh. there's probably a difference between like a really goofy esquire man and like a good esquire man just like how there's bad hashtag menswear and then there's good hashtag menswear um but you know even even if like you know this doesn't give you the confidence at least know that all this stuff has historical precedent you know yeah people I guess, have... yeah i guess like yeah Go like yeah, uh, even if you're not yeah even if you're not into vintage and don't really care about you know like how men dressed in the 30s it's just it's it's just great to see 
uh, the it's it's the evidence that all tradition is bullshit. <laughs> like yeah. all these like rules and like things that people say, you don't have to worry about it. I think it takes the pressure off a little bit. You know, it's just uh, d- these people were just wearing what they wanted to wear. They they went out looking how they wanted to look, and uh, hey, that's what everyone should do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's. I, I know a lot of people, uh, I've, been, I've had a lot of conversations about this, about authenticity, um, ever since our pod came out, which is really cool because people are wondering, hey, at what point does something become authentic? Does the fact that you're following trends make it less authentic? Is the fact that we're having a fractured social media where there's a bunch of different genres make it less authentic because you can just go into it? And I say authenticity is bullshit, man, because people back and then... we do an episode on it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the end of it, we did say, who the fuck cares? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea is even even back into the golden era, like I mentioned, like tradition didn't even matter. People were wearing it because they wanted to, because it was cool. People were making these, and the funny thing is, all maybe the, the fact is a lot a lot of these like weird ass clothes don't exist anymore. Like these lapelless jackets or like the crepe soled like drawstring shoes or whatever don't exist is because like they weren't popular. Um, but who cares? Like they made them. Like yeah. and 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 some people like they make versions of them today. You know, and I think that clothing shouldn't be focused on like being super appropriate um at least all the time because even in the esquire copy they do say about like formality levels and occasion but then they're just like okay well this works for that um so here's some ways you can get around that by wearing this stuff and i feel that's very similar to how spence and i approach stuff especially like in the corporate article where we're like you know yeah obviously try and fit in wear something nice but no one's going to notice if you're wearing a Macclesfield tie or a Foulard yeah. tie. You know, you might as well go along with it. Or you can wear a brown check jacket. Just wear it with gray pants. Don't wear it with white pants. You know, there, there are ways to do it. And and Esquire, the Esquire man, il- apparel arts, all these illustrations are really like the origin of kind of how Spencer and I approach clothing. Because that's what yeah, we fucking is... grew up with. <laughs> like, it was... uh, Yeah, it's like, like I said, it was one of my earliest. Um, it was like really the earliest thing I ever saw. Where it wasn't, it wasn't just me looking at like a photo of like you know the fucking like, like Ed Sullivan show or whatever the audience. It was like actual pictures of like here's how to dress, um, and obviously there's a lot of content like that now that we don't really like. But this was a good version of that. So there you it's, go. Yeah, it's it's such a it's it's just so. I don't know. To me, it's empowering, you know, because I think a lot of people, even at the end of the day, even if they don't really believe in authority per se, you know, like, oh, I don't believe this guy. But like what they really want is just precedent. They want Mm -hmm. to know that they are not alone in their choices. And especially that's what was for me. I wanted proof that people wore spear point collars. I wanted proof that people like like I wanted proof to know that what I was wearing, I wasn't alone. That that what I was that I, what I was doing isn't that weird because of some other precedent, and Esquire, and Apparel Arts is that precedent, man. Yep. It's it, it helps that it's older. It helps that there is some gravitas that it used to be Esquire, um, you know. But it's it's really great as just a reference point for literally almost everything that we do. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, and even if you're not interested necessarily in dressing like the 30s, if you're at all interested in just like, I don't know, development of men's fat, like the history of men's fashion or like style development and all that stuff, it's, you know, I, I think it's really cool. It's just a historical uh, artifact. Yeah, I mean, again, like I said, you could literally see not just a change, I mean, broadly the changes in how people illustrate people you get a little bit more of like that kind of like post-war semi-photorealistic drawing style later on as opposed to the 30s where it's a lot more deco a lot more like kind of the faces are more abstract you know a lot more angular Mm -hmm. and everything um but it's uh yeah you get to see just how like the lapel gorge changes the length of jacket changes the ties the collars i mean you can literally see them go from like really short kind of stiffer club collars point collars to like long spear points then to going to like literal like arrow man collars in like the late for yep. like the mid to late 40s you the know like semi-spread shirts exactly you know you see them go from like super crazy check jacket separates to like more calm separates you see a lot more business wear in the 50s or whatever or the, like the 40s and everything it is 
absolutely great. And it's also, you know, when you're able to learn the differences between eras, you can find out more about what you want to look like. Exactly. You know, you can, and, and you, there are ways, like, especially for me, like, if I'm looking at the corporate wear, I could get the ideas of color palettes from the 50s and then get it with, like, a 30s cut, you know? Like, it, like there's a lot of, like, leeway in what you can learn from and, and take from. It's, it's the same thing as, like, looking at, like, why, like, at the Drake's archive of lookbooks or, like, the Armory lookbooks. It's the same thing, but just done in a way that is kind of free from brand. It's just... It's supposed. It's literally supposed to inspire you to be creative, seek this stuff out, get it commissioned, find brands that do this, and then wear it in a way that is, you know, cool and and yeah. just like just really different. Um, so you should take uh, take these images that we're posting on the Instagram, take them to your tailor, um, <laughs> yeah. and get it made. That's that's what you. Sh- if you are a fan of the podcast, that's what you would do. Absolutely. You know. I yeah. mean. But on a, on a more serious thing, it's, it's also why I like to use it whenever I, like, talk about anything. Like, there's always, yeah. like, I found, like, oh, talk about sports shirt with a suit. I got I got not only a picture of a movie star doing it or whatever, I also got an illustration from the, th- from the 30s, you know. It's just, it's just really great to have that precedent and to also, um, you know, I think we, we look at a lot of pictures of movie stars. This is kind of like that, except... These could be anybody, you know, these, these yeah. guys are really cool. So hopefully when you look at all the images, there's something you can learn from it. Feel free to save them um, because <laughs> they're you know, yours. Yeah, they're yours now. Um, we've included a bunch of them that we like, that we think are really cool in the show notes here. Um, hopefully there's some that you've never seen before and hopefully you're mm-hmm. able to read the copy. Um, and we'll probably again uh, in the feature on the stream. I don't know if we're going to talk about this exactly on stream because um other oh, people we'll, don't care yeah i mean we could care. like you know we could i don't know we could bring up we could talk about you, you'll see uh this saturday sunday or whatever this sunday yeah, sunday sunday <laughs> you'll see this sunday <laughs> sorry you've been doing it for so long um yeah, yeah but tune in sunday 8 p.m pacific, pacific. standard yep uh that's when we're gonna be talking about this uh and uh, we'll probably, we'll assuming probably cover you're some listening the, when this episode comes out yeah and um, we'll probably talk about the um you know, deep dive on some actual illustrations as well, uh-huh. uh, which we're, is a recurring, uh, a reoccurring stream for us. Yeah, and of course, if you can't join us on Sunday, please join us Wednesday, where we're gaming. Who knows what games we're going to be playing in the future? Um, but uh, we've been enjoying recently, at the time of recording, we've been playing uh, some poker, uh, stuff like that. Some it's it's fun. Yeah, it's really it's zombies. Really great. Sometimes Call of Duty zombies, Spider Man, yeah. whatever it, you want. And so, you know, whatever, if you're whatever we want, actually. Yeah, not, not you. Not you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, jinx. Um, well, you know, if you guys are interested in discussing more with us, and, and we do love discussing this, uh, feel free to join our Patreon Discord. Uh, probably, you know, we've, we've tried to make it become one of the best, and hopefully it is one of the one of the it's, most. It's a really, it's a really great uh, menswear community. That's right. And uh, I'm not, I'm not saying that because I am. You uh, own I it. made it. <laughs> yeah. But it's, uh, no, it's it's genuinely, like, really cool to, yeah, there's a lot of, like, really knowledgeable, really stylish guys in there. Um, I think it's a genuinely really helpful resource. It's yeah. super, it's super cool to be in it. I, and right. again, not just saying that because I made it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can get there by going to patreon.com slash style and direction. Uh, $5 a month will give you access to the Discord, as well as a bonus episode that's just for fun, kind of menswear adjacent, but you get to keep up with the personal lives of Ethan Spencer, producer MJ, and civilian Matt uh, mm-hmm. as we talk about literally whatever. I don't know. Whatever we want. Exactly. What, not whatever not we whatever want. whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, of course, $10 a month gives you, ac- uh, gives you access to all of that. Gives you access to our vocal cords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the extra $5 is just there for you to, uh, you know, to give us a support and we really appreciate it um so really quick thank you to austin malott shane curry philip regard audrey jessica jeremy ostriker jared colian and james devanzo thank you very much um even even if you don't want to join the patreon at this time it's okay we'll still be here but you can go give us yep. five stars on apple podcasts that will really help us um help more people listen to this uh because we are not we don't really care about the patreon what we care about is controlling the minds of everybody <laughs> out there we want to control the airwaves exactly and i uh, think once you control the airwaves you control the world yeah i think if throwing fits has like thousands of uh of uh <laughs> of uh reviews and we have like 30 so come on guys we need to get yeah, get the numbers up, get there. up there that's right um 
again, you can again uh, check out the uh, the essay if you want to listen to or to listen. If you read, read my words on this, I'll probably talk a little about my perspective on parallel arts as as well as all the images are there. Uh, but you can follow me on Instagram at Ethan M Wong. My Instagram is Spencer DSO. And thank you to MJ for producing the podcast. We will see you guys in the next one. Welcome back. July 2021, baby. <laughs> Season 2. Wait, August, you mean? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I was saying I was saying as like a, as a, um, like, R.A.P. July, because we're in August. Okay, rest in peace, July. Um, we'll see you again next year. <laughs> <laughs> next year, we're, you're going to have to tenant it. Yeah. Okay. World picture. Tim, picture. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Clip clap. Clip clap. Pinching? Clip clap. <laughs> <laughs>